Hello, I'm Dave Messersmith. I'm a member of Penn State's Marcellus Education Team, and I'm here today on the University Park campus with Tom Murphy. Tom is a member of, uh, also a member of Penn State's Marcellus Education Team, and also uh, an Extension Educator with Penn State Extension here in Pennsylvania. So, Tom, thank you for being with us uh, today. Welcome, Dave. Um, the question we're going to talk about today in this in this clip is uh, unit sizes and well spacing. And we get a lot of questions from landowners in, in the general public uh, as well about uh, production units and what those units mean and what are the implications they have on landowners. So I guess first of all the question would be what are, uh, what are production units? Dave, a production unit is, is actually uh, by definition a number of acres that typically are contiguous that a line is drawn around those acres on a map by an individual company or a couple companies if they're operating together and they're saying that at that point in time that once a well is drilled in there commercially those that are inside that same unit would benefit from the um, royalties that could potentially be paid. So again it's something that the company voluntarily determines who's in that unit and who's not. Okay. In Pennsylvania, um, in other states there are, there are um, uh, required sizes of units. The, the state would set a, a unit size and everybody within that unit, whether or not they're, whether they are leased or not, uh, are included in those, those units. Um, is that the case in Pennsylvania? And if, if not, uh, what, is the, what is the case in Pennsylvania? Yeah, Dave, actually in Pennsylvania there is no uh, mandatory size or there, there's no legal definition as, as to exactly how big that would, would be. And in fact, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of variation in units. Uh, commonly, a lot of leases are written with a maximum of 640 acres right in the lease. Uh, but we're seeing units that are, that are as small as 150 acres, and we've seen units out there that are in the 2,000 acre range. Just depending upon what the company was able to negotiate with the landowner and a variety of other factors that, that they're considering when they're determining what the size and the shape of that same unit might be over the course of time. And what, what does it, what does, uh, uh, how are unleased landowners affected by units? If a landowner decides uh, they don't want to lease and don't want to participate uh, in Marcellus development, what does that mean for uh, the development of a unit in that area? Can landowners be forced, uh, forced into a unit if they're not leased? And Dave, here in Pennsylvania there is no forced unitization or forced pooling as it's often referred to, as there is in some other states uh, nearby, including in New York State. So in Pennsylvania, a landowner that would not want to participate for whatever the reason might be that they might have, they, can, uh, uh, they are just naturally excluded from that because of the fact that they cannot be forced to, be, uh, to participate in it. Okay. Uh, the next question has to do with, uh, we talked about it a little bit already, but the, the size of the units that we're seeing and what the trend is for the, the coming uh, into the future. How, how big are the units that we're seeing? Well, what we're seeing, like I indicated, was units have a pretty wide uh, variety of uh, dimension to them, whether that's measured in uh, geographical uh, shape and size and acres, all those are factors. But uh, we're seeing a trend that would be speaking towards, in most places in Pennsylvania, some in particular that are trending towards the larger uh, acre areas involved. And, and those upwards in the um, uh, 1,000 acre, 1,200 acre uh, size uh, units at this point in time. One of the things that's associated with the units and the size of those units is well spacing. And we hear uh, they're very commonly people talk about wall spacing on the order of 40 acres or 80 acres or 100 acres. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what wall spacing is and um, what it means when you're talking about wells in the context of a larger unit? What, what companies are indicating at this point in time is that um, the drain area for an individual well, whether it's a vertical well or whether it's a uh, horizontal well, will be approximately 80 acres. That's what the geology will will uh, uh, be uh, conducive to matching to the well and, and actually being drained. But that uh, 80 acres is not necessarily a circle or a square, it could be a long rectangle depending upon, again, whether it's a, a horizontal well or whether it's a vertical well. So those sizes and shapes of those individual drain patterns or drain field connected with that one well will vary here in Pennsylvania. 
Uh, 80 acres, although that's what's being considered uh, potentially the standard for this geology, uh, could vary and it could be 100 acres or 120 acres or it could be 60 acres, again depending upon how the well is designed and some other factors that are, that are part of some of the decisions that are made there. So an individual well on a, a well pad inside of a drilling unit might be long and slender versus being a square or a circle like I indicated before. Okay. And the, the last question I have is, is um, what it means when acreage is held by production. We, we hear that term uh, pretty commonly, uh, again, associated with units and well spacing. Um, and we know that companies are uh, doing their best to hold acreage by production. So if you could explain just a little bit, a little bit about what that means and, and what, that, what implications there are for landowners in that, in that concept. Sure, Dave. What that means is here in, in Pennsylvania, um, as is similar in other states as well, but thinking about here in the state, if a company were to come in and draw a unit on the map and you fell inside that unit and they, and there was, let's say for argument's sake, for example, there were a thousand acres inside that unit and you had a uh, hundred acres and fifty of your acres were now inside that unit. Your entire parcel is what's being referred to as held by production, assuming that something happened there and they drilled a well, they built a pad, depending upon how your lease language uh, is that, that, that would affect you. But it, it would potentially hold you by production over the, over the life of that uh, unit, which could be a long period of time, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, whatever it might be. If you had a few clause in your lease, that would mean that the acres that were not included in that same unit uh, either might fall into a different unit, and if they didn't fall into a different unit and the lease expired, the primary term on that lease expired, those additional acres then could go back out on the open market and, and be released to a different company or potentially back to the same company. So there's a variety of factors that are really kind of critical there. But companies are certainly trying to hold ground by production as long as they can. And the number one reason is because of the sheer volume of acres that they have and they're trying to tie it up so that it doesn't, uh, the leases don't roll out of um, out of the uh, out of that legal opportunity for them to hold them. Okay, well, Tom, thank you. I think that was helpful in helping us understand what what units and wall spacing is all about. If you're interested in learning more about units, you can attend one of our extension programs that Tom and I and a number of our colleagues do across Pennsylvania. Uh, the name of that program is called Understanding Units and Managing Royalty Income.